Hi everyone, welcome back to my lab and today's video, which is going to be my review with two looks of the Give Me Glow Vivid Rose Eyeshadow Palette. I've been playing with the palette for about a week. I have gotten to play with absolutely every shade and I'm ready to share my thoughts with you. Before we get into the video, if you're new here, I'm Jodi. Thank you for joining me for today's video. I hope you're going to enjoy this video and therefore consider subscribing to my channel so that you can join me for a future video. Thank you to my returning subscribers. I really appreciate you and thank you especially to the first five commenters on my previous video. I really appreciate your showing my channel lab love. It really helps me out when you engage with my content and I also enjoy chatting makeup with you in the comment section. Those that have YouTube channels will have the YouTube logo and be linked down below in case you're interested in checking out any of my YouTube friends. Now without any further delay, let's go ahead and get into the video. I purchased my palette, I think it was on Black Friday, it was the day that the palette launched which was November 27th. I paid $45 for the palette and $8.25 for shipping. I also picked up the Sweet and Sticky palette but I haven't dug into this one yet. If you're interested in seeing this one in action, let me know in the comments section. This is kind of a follow-up palette from their Vintage Rose palette which was, I believe, leave an eight pan eyeshadow palette. I do have that one in my collection and that one has roses and greens which is a color story that I really enjoy. This is what the outer packaging of the palette looks like. You do have the name of the palette in the front. On the back side you have your ingredient list. This is listed as a vegan and cruelty free brand. It says handmade by Give Me Glow Cosmetics. It has a 12 month shelf life and it does have the cruelty free bunny on there. The total amount of product you're getting is 35 grams. The eyeshadow the eyeshadow palette itself has the exact same finish as the outer packaging which is something that's really nice and that does include the ingredient information as well as the shelf life and everything else. Here's what the inside of the palette looks like. This one is called Vivid Rose and very true to its name it's got a lot of pink and also a lot of purple. This palette is larger than the Vintage Rose palette which only had eight shades but this one seems a lot more monochromatic in my opinion. So let's go ahead and look at some swatches of the palette. I am familiar Familiar with the Give Me Glow Cosmetics formula. It is a thicker, very pigmented formula. It goes on quite pigmented right away and you can definitely see that in the swatches, especially for the metallic shades. Their metallic formula always swatches absolutely beautifully. One of my favorite palettes in my collection is the Juicy Olive palette, which is made by Give Me Glow Cosmetics. In this video, I'm going to be sharing two looks with you and I focused more with the purples in the palette. Today, I'm focused more on the warm tone purples and I wanted to use that shimmer since I used the other shimmers in my other look and in the other look I also stuck to the more dusty purples kind of shade so the first thing I wanted to mention about this palette is with the color selection in my opinion the shades spill the tea rose he loves me and talk dirt to me I would have eliminated one of those shades and swapped them out for something else I think the greater degree of similarity is between spill the tea rose and he loves me they have slightly different undertones but at least on my skin tone they look fairly similar on the eye and so I would have liked to have seen a different shade instead of either one of those two talk dirt to me is nice because it is a mid-tone range shade and it it does work really well to blend out the shade he loves me not so I understand talk dirt to me but between those two shades I would have replaced it with something else to give the palette a little bit more versatility also I did work with the pinks and I did find that on my skin tone the pinks are at least the top two shades they're not as punchy as I would like I did use this shade to blend out the purple shade on my eye look today and it worked out well that way but when I tried to focus only on this little quad here in the front I kept finding that the looks were a little bit too subtle for me a little bit too pastel a little bit too Barbie if you will and I wasn't really enjoying them so that's why I incorporated the other metallic shade in my look plus I wanted to showcase as many of the shadows in the video as I possibly could but in general for my skin tone I really wasn't enjoying just the pure pink it's just a little bit too pink and too Barbie for what I'm personally comfortable with or what I personally enjoy because I do love color I think if I had a deeper pink maybe something a little bit more red which is also very rose right it would have given the palette a lot more versatility so I would have definitely switched one of those shades for something red because red and purple goes well together as does red and pink so yeah I think I would have 
like to have seen something a little bit more red. The metallic shades apply best with your fingertip. You're going to see me apply them with a brush, but I'll also intensify them with my fingers, and that's the way that I prefer to work with the metallic shadows. It's something that I've kind of come to terms with, but I'll use them both ways. Now, in terms of the mattes, they do perform really well, but like I said, they're really pigmented. So with Give Me Glow Cosmetics, I personally prefer to work on a set eyeshadow base, which is not something I typically do. So typically I'll use the Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion, not set that and then work with my shadows there but because these are so pigmented I actually in this video used the makeup by Mario eye primer and I did set it down and I had an okay time blending out the shadows as you'll see in the demonstration so if you're new to give me glow cosmetics I definitely do suggest that you set your eyeshadow base my eyelids are a little bit more on the oily side and so having them set and nice and dry actually allows me to blend the mattes a little bit better if you prefer to work work kind of darkest to lightest then these shades are ideal you can really set down the dark shade and then blend it out with the lighter ones I did work with it that way especially when I was trying to create the pink looks and it works fine that way as well but I know that's not kind of the most common way to do eyeshadow but it is something that works with the palette the way it's designed now that I've had the palette for some time and I've gotten to play with it I have to say that I would have been 100% happy if this had been a small six pan palette with just the purple shade on there and those are the shades that I'm using the most in my eyeshadow looks every time I reach into this palette I find that I like the purples on my skin tone a lot more again the pinks they're I don't know, I just don't care for the pinks that much. Again, I really don't think that we needed both of those shades in the palette. Now, I've also seen some people share that they've received empty palettes. What is that all about? I'm definitely grateful that my palette arrived intact and all of the shades were included. Let's go ahead and switch to the demo so that you can see how I create this eye look as well as the more dusty purple look. And I'll be chatting with you on how I blend the shadows in those clips. I'm starting out with my eyes primed and set. I'm using the Makeup by Mario Master Eye Prep and Set. And I used the lighter shade and I did set my entire lid with powder. So this is the beautiful Vivid Rose palette for the look that I'm creating today. I'm going to stick kind of with these purples. I'm going to start out with the shade right here, Spill the Tea Rose. And I'm just going to apply that all along the would-be crease area. And I'm using an Elysium Cosmetics Nuri brush. This is a brush set that I will be sharing on my channel coming up very, very soon. This company actually gifted me this brush set. And it is a really beautiful brush set. I'm enjoying it so far but obviously before I uh, share my thoughts on it I wanted to get some good use and wash them a couple of times as well. So as you can see this is a very very dusty pink rose shade and I am applying just the smallest amount. From here I'm gonna go and continue in a gradient of using He Loves Me then Talk Dirt to Me which is the shade here and lastly I will go into the shade He Loves Me Not. So for the shade He Loves Me, I'm using the same brush and I'm just focusing that a little bit lower down. So as you can see, these are really dusty purple kind of colors and it's getting a little bit more pink shade because it had a little bit of the deeper purple on the brush already which I used to blend my other eye but it's really a true dusty rose kind of color. This is very pigmented as you can see I'm holding my brush really low on the handle so that I can deposit just the smallest amount of pigment and then also blend it out. From the same brush set I'm using the brush Zuri and this is one that's kind of like the MAC 217 brush in that it has kind of a flattened edge but it can also be used as a blending brush so I'm packing this kind of on the outer V part of my eye and I'm kind of doing this in a wing shape you can see in the other eye that I do have a wing it's created with the eyeshadow so I'll be using the shade he loves me not for that but prior to any of that work I do want to get really nice blend so you can see what a lovely blend I'm getting with these shadows I'm familiar enough with the give me glow formula to know that I can can work on a set base for this to make blending a little bit easier because these are very very pigmented shadows and then also the color gradient here is really nice as well which makes this specific eye look very easy to blend from the same brush set I'm using the brush 
Cleo, which is a pencil brush, and I'm going to run this along my lash line. Now I am going to blend this out a bit and then I will intensify it later after all the blending is done, but I do want to deposit some of the color first in the general shape that I would like. So going back into the Zuri brush, I'm going to just go along the color that I just put down and I'm going to brush kind of towards my nose, towards the center of my face, so I can diffuse the color a bit. For this, I'm kind of using the brush vertically to take the wing inward, and it works really well to blend it out. Like I said, I'll be doing a video on these brushes, but these are 100% synthetic and vegan brushes. I'm going to take a little bit of that deep he loves me not shade and I am kind of applying that right in the outer V of my eye so that it gives my eyeshadow a little bit of depth in that area but I'm still keeping that wing shape and again I'm gonna turn the brush on its side and and blend inward you can totally leave this like this but I did want to blend the shadows so that you can see what a nice blend you can get with this look so I'm just using the Nuri brush which is just a round blending brush and I'm blending inward so that you can see the kind of blend that I'm getting with the matte shadows so now I'm gonna work with the metallic shades in the palette and there are two that I'm working in this look there's going to be this one which is called pink rosé and then I'm going Going to be using this one which is called Petal to the Metal. The one I'm not using is the more magenta shade which is called Guns and Roses. The names on this palette are so cute. For the pink rosé shade I'm going in with an absolutely dry brush and this one is a flat shader brush called Alva and you can see I'm just applying it on the inner corner. I never wet my brushes. Now with these give me glow shadows. You can definitely get the most impact if you use your brush damp or if you apply them with your fingertips. So a little bit of the purple shade that I'm going to be using I'm going to apply it with my fingertips but I'm intentionally trying to do a softer look today but still in incorporate a little bit of color. Now I'm using the other side of that same brush and I'm using the shade Petal to the Metal and you can see I'm going to build that up on the inside part of my eye and work towards the outer part. Now with this I'm using slight packing and blending motions kind of patting the shade onto my lid. I'm using the brush kind of to give it the shape that I want and then I'm going to apply a little bit of this shade with my finger right in the center where I want the most impact. So you can see how these shades pick up on the finger and you're going to see how much intensity I can get when I do use my fingers. I used to not want to use my fingers for eyeshadows but there's really just nothing like using your fingertips for some of these more uh, dimethicone type formulas with these palettes because the warmth of your finger just kind of melts it right on. Gives a really impactful look. And then I'm going to use the shader brush to kind of blend it into the lighter pink shade. And then I'm going to take the blending brush with no additional product and just kind of run it along the edges so that it's a clean transition. I have some fallout on this eye. It's my more awkward eye. I didn't get much fallout on this side. There's a little bit, but I'm never really too careful since I started doing my eyes first. And I really love that because I can so easily wipe it away and just be as messy as I want. Taking the deepest shade, which is again, He Loves Me Not, I'm going to use an angled brush. This one is from Nabla, it's the number 102. And I shared a video using all of these brushes in a chatty get ready with me trying new makeup. So I'll link that up in the cards if you'd like to check that out. So what I'd like to do is create a wing with this shadow and I'm trying to do like an inner corner, like um, what is it called? An extended inner corner look with this same eyeshadow just to get that elongated cat eye effect. So that's why I want to make sure and I have a wing going on on the outside to kind of build off of that a little bit as well. So I'm just going back and forth and kind of stamping it on and I'm only going to carry it about halfway. 
So that looks about even. I didn't apply mascara or any liner or anything because I do want to work on the inner corner. I'm going to do the rest of my face makeup and then we'll be back to do the lower lash line and try the inner corner. All right, we're back and this is how we're going to finish the eye look. I really only used one shade and it's the shade He Loves Me Not. I struggled a little bit to do the inner corner because my eyes are so close set that I actually had to change the shape I was using a little bit. I went ahead and I used that brow brush and I stamped all along the lower lash line and I emphasized the outer corner as well. So I stamped my brush to work on the inner corner and I really went along with the shape of my upper lash line and then I went ahead and I carried it all the way through because it was looking kind of like it was floating in space. So I was again using that Nabla brush and then I switched to a Linda Hallberg. This is like a, a gel liner brush. It's number 300 and I used the same sh shade to connect it. But like I said, my eyes are super close set together and I miscalculated how much space I would have to bring in the extended inner corner. I've tried this with gel liner in the past and it's been a big fail because my eyes watered really badly. So then all I did was I kind of went along the lower lash line with that pencil brush. This again is the Clio brush just to give me a slightly more diffused look. Then I used black eyeliner and a whole lot of mascara. I did end up using the Makeup by Mario palette and a tiny e.l.f. concealer brush to clean up the inner corner a little bit. And I also touched up my under eye powder with it and it was working out pretty well. So this is the finished look. We're back to do look number two with the Vivid Rose palette from Give Me Glow Cosmetics. And I know that I already showed you a purple look, but I'm going to show you another one. I did try to play with the pinks, but to be honest, I don't like them very much. I did use this one to blend out the purple shade that I'm using, which is basically this shade here, Flower Power. The other look that I created was using more of the dusty purple tones, so I'm going more with a true purple tone today. Like before, I did Prime and Set with the Makeup by Mario Master Eye Prep and Set. And and we're gonna go ahead and start. I'm using one of these Nabla brushes from the Trend Mood box. This is the N306 brush. And I'm going to take the shade Flower Power, which is the deepest purple, and I'm basically going to tap it all over my lid. Now, this shade, again, is going over a set base and so you don't get the extreme pigmentation right away. With this look I'm kind of doing more of a classic smoky eye which I don't do too often since my eyes are smaller and kind of close together. This kind of look tends to close off my eyes even more. So as you can see that was two dips of my brush and using just light tapping motions. The shade I'm going to use to blend that out is the shade Pop of Pink and I'm just gonna apply it along the edges and I'm using the Zuri brush from Elysium Cosmetics. And I'm just kind of applying that just on the outside to give it a blended look. The reason why I don't like the pink shades too much is because they're very pale. So on my medium skin tone, they can look a little bit chalky. I did try to use them, but I just didn't enjoy them on their own. However, using it to blend out the purple, I think looks really nice. So the only shimmer I hadn't used in the other look was that shimmer right there. It's called Guns N' Roses and so that's going to be the one I'm going to use in this look and I'm just going to apply it directly with my fingertip and I'm going to apply it in the center just for a little bit of textural interest and that's just in the very center of the lid. Now just because I really like that shade Petal to the Metal, I did apply just a tiny bit right in the center for a little bit more lightness but I wasn't really going for a halo eye look with it so I just tapped on just a teeny tiny bit. Once I got those shades applied, I did use the deeper purple and I'm using a Nabla N205 brush, which is just a tiny blending brush just so that I can get the inner and outer corner of my eye just to get it deeper but also a little bit more precise as well. This is going to be it for the basics of the eye look. Super simple. I do like the way that it's looking. I just didn't enjoy the pink, so I'm sorry I didn't show you a pink look, but it just wasn't looking good on me, and I'd like to film a couple of other videos today, but I'll chat with you about that when I do the official review of the palette. I will be right back. I'm not sure if I was filming, so I want to let you know how I finished my look. I used the shade 
flower power along the lower lash line using a pencil brush which I blended out with the shade pop of pink using a fluffier brush and then I applied the shade pink rosé on the inner corner very simple look very on theme for the palette in my opinion so this was my second look for you using the give me glow vivid rose palette I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out and share my final thoughts on the palette I hope you enjoyed seeing how I created the eye looks I do enjoy both of them let me know which one was your favorite whether you like the dusty kind of cat eye look or if you preferred this one more traditional smoky eye this is not a kind of eye shape that I wear too often because it closes off my eyes but I did want to show you the third metallic shade that I hadn't yet used all of the metallics performed very similarly as I would expect from the give me glow cosmetics formula my favorite shade in the palette is definitely petal to the metal it's a beautiful shade on its own it layers beautifully over the others as you saw I kind of tapped a little bit in the center of my eyelid today I couldn't resist using it it's definitely a favorite in the palette it's really really beautiful I like the theme of the palette overall the shade names are really really cute but like I said I really could have done just fine with just the six pans that are on the right side of the palette the others I didn't care for as much this shade pink frosé it doesn't look as metallic when I apply it to my eye and because it's lighter than my skin tone it kind of looks a little bit cakey I didn't demonstrate using that one all over the lid but I have and it's not one that I enjoy all over the lid all in all I like the palette but it's not going to be my favorite give me glow palette I still prefer the juicy olive palette because I really enjoy greens and for that reason I would recommend picking up vintage rose instead because that one is going to give you a lot more versatility in terms of the color stories that you can use than this one will this one is a little bit more monochromatic and the way that I chose to use it it definitely is this is more of a warm tone look whereas the other look that I had was a little bit more cool tone but still I, I prefer vintage rose with the color story in it. it it includes greens so it shouldn't be a surprise overall the quality is really nice definitely on par with the other give me glow cosmetic shadows that I've used I'm excited to get into the sweet and sticky palette so again let me know if you'd like to see that one featured on my channel so I also ordered several singles and those are nowhere to be found just yet I've been tracking them and tracking them and they've been in Texas for weeks so but I mean with everything that's going on it's understandable I'm getting shipping delays from pretty much everybody so it's just interesting that I ordered that on the same day and it's still it's still not here but I'll definitely share them with you when they do arrive I plan to do like an indie makeup haul because I tried a lot of indie makeup when they had their Black Friday sales I'm really excited to share those on my channel thank you so much for joining me for today's video if you did enjoy it don't forget that big thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already as I would love to have you join my makeup family if you have any questions that I didn't touch upon in the video leave those in the comment section for me and I'll do my very best to answer them as best as I can thank you for spending a few minutes of your day with me. I really appreciate it. I hope you're doing really well and enjoying the holiday season and I look forward to seeing you again very very soon on my next one. Bye bye!